Hey guys, uh, I've got to install uh, telemetry on a uh, slash VXL two-wheel drive. It's my understanding uh, that it's the same on um, the Bandit, the Rustler, the Stampede two-wheel drive, and the uh, Ford Raptor models. Uh, may or may not help you other guys. So you've got your TQI docking base and you've installed it on your TQI radio system and uh, your car didn't work did it? Some of you may have realized that uh, you have to have telemetry hardware but uh, uh, when we bought the uh, docking base there was no information about uh, what it took to make it work and once we put the iPhone on, uh, you may have found out as we did, you need more. So basically, it, uh, the telemetry parts that you need to go with the docking base just about double your cost uh, over what you would have just paid for the docking base. The 6541 power tap allows you to monitor your battery voltage as you drive. The 6520 RPM sensor enables uh, RPM and speed data to be displayed on your docking base. The 6537 uh, RPM speed sensor wire retainer uh, has two parts in the bag and uh, one of them caused me quite a bit of grief because I wanted to install it and couldn't find a way and after contacting Traxxas I found out that that smaller piece that's kind of T-shaped uh, is not for the Slash, the Bandit, the Rustler, or the Stampede, uh, and maybe not the Ford Raptor either. It was uh, designed for the Emax to hold the RPM sensor in place. The 6538 telemetry trigger magnet holder uh, is in this bag, and there's two. And uh, depending upon your vehicle, one or the other works, and the other one does not. In my situation, the smaller uh, magnet holder was the correct one. And you also get uh, extra screws. One set works, one set does not. We'll talk about that later. So the first thing to do after removing the body is uh, to remove the right rear wheel of your slash. And uh, once you remove the wheel, a good place for it is under the transmission to support the uh, slash. To remove the uh, gear cover, uh, these two screws will uh, need to be removed. And uh, take note that the lower screw is significantly longer than the uh, upper screw. Extra care should be taken in, in, re in reinstalling these screws. The uh, upper screw on uh, my cover uh, stripped when I put it back in and uh, that has not uh, caused me a problem yet though I realize now it's a, uh, a weak spot. Now to remove the spur gear you'll notice the axle is turning as I turn the screwdriver and uh, so I put the end of a uh, bit in there in the universal joint and held it in place while I removed the nut. This may not be advised. While replacing the spur gear, I held the gear with my thumb while replacing the nut, and this seemed to work, uh, though it did take quite a bit of pressure. Here you see the slipper pressure plate and friction pads. This is the steel clutch disc, and uh, made me a little uneasy when it fell off there like that, and. Uh, took me a moment to figure out how to get, get it back in correct place, but uh, I've given you a picture and this is the way it goes. In some of the information that I searched out, I found that uh, there is a telemetry ready gear cover uh, for the Slash and uh, maybe some of the other vehicles. I found that mine was already prepared to receive the RPM sensor and so I didn't have to buy the uh, telemetry ready gear cover. The RPM speed sensor uh, retainer and the extra piece and uh, two screws to hold the retainer in place.
just uh, snap it in real good. Uh, I, I got it to snap two different times before it went all the way in. And uh, then the wire has a track that it's supposed to be in. Right up there, the white wire didn't want to go down in there, so I helped it. These uh, hard thumbnails are, are pretty good tools sometimes. The uh, wire retainer slides right down in under that cap and uh, settles into the bottom or the top of the cover, whichever way you want to uh, look at it. And uh, then the two little screws hold it in place. This took a little, little bit of turning. There were no threads there, so you just kind of have to push it in there until the, the plastic uh, gives way and the screws begin to tighten up. I'd uh, advise caution to make sure that you don't strip it out. Now for the telemetry trigger magnet holder. Uh, there's again two in the bag with two sets of screws. The uh, magnet really wants to hold on to those screws, which uh, indicates, I guess, it's a pretty strong little magnet. And as it turns out, this is the correct holder. The other one, uh, the larger one here, is uh, not the correct one for this application. And uh, I determined that by trial and error. Remove the three screws, and one of them was pretty tight. Place the magnet in on this side, and uh, again, that that uh, hard thumbnail is a pretty handy tool to press it up in there. It will settle back into those holes that are on top of the spur gear and uh, kind of push into place. Now take note, uh, these are the shorter screws um, and the ones uh, closest to, to you in the picture are the ones that were removed. The ones back up at the top there on the left are too long. I used those first uh, and uh, push the friction pads off the opposite side of the uh, disc and had to put them back on. Apparently didn't do any damage though. Uh, if you notice that one there in the top left, it, it was off and uh, those screws are not correct. So uh, I advise uh, uh, getting rid of the longer screws and, and not getting them mixed up. Placing the spur gear back in place, make sure and the teeth touch the, uh, the drive gear um, first and it will just slip right into place. Then put the spring back in place, add the nut, uh, hold uh, very firmly with, your, with the thumb. Um, that may not be possible if you've got uh, uh, little hands. And uh, once you get it in, in place and the, and the spring is completely compressed, then uh, back off a full turn and that's just a place to begin uh, figuring out how to adjust your clutch back to the correct uh, position. I believe we did go back in and back off on that nut another half turn before it seemed that the clutch was operating correctly. I would guess uh, that in different applications, uh, uh, different vehicles, that uh, that might be a good setting or it might uh, you might have to just keep trying until you got it correct for you. I noticed that uh, when we first put it back together uh, the first time that it seemed that uh, 
and taking off forward, the clutch was slipping too much. And that uh, and in reverse, that it was grabbing too hard. Now take the blue end of the RPM sensor and run it through the hole in the center of the shock tower. That's the same place where the wires from the motor go through the shock tower to the speed control. Take up all the extra slack and uh, put the uh, gear cover back in the correct position. Reinstall the, uh, your screws. The longer screw goes back in the bottom hole and the shorter screw goes in the top hole. My experience with putting that short screw back in is uh, before it felt tight to me, it stripped in the hole. And uh, as yet, I haven't experienced a problem with that, but I know it's a weak area now, and uh, I recommend being very cautious re reinstalling that uh, short screw in that top hole. Once you have reinstalled the gear cover, the next step will be to reinstall the right rear wheel. Now you can remove the two screws from the cover for the Traxxas Link receiver. Now we remove two more screws from the receiver box next to the electronics. The RPM sensor plug is a tight fit here and uh, it was pretty difficult to get it through there. And uh, then once I got it in there, I couldn't, couldn't touch it, so I used needle nose to pull it through. The number two slot is, the, is marked RPM, though you might find it necessary to have a magnifying glass to read though, those letters that say RPM. The 6521 temperature sensor. You note it has to go back through the same hole that the plug for the RPM sensor came, came through. And uh, once you get it through there, you need to pull through with the cable protector and uh, be careful not to overstress it or to pull anything else loose while you're going through there. The gray plug for the temperature sensor plugs into the first slot marked VT near the top from this perspective of the electronics. Before re replacing the cover on the receiver box where the wires enter the electronics, uh, it needs to be sealed uh, with grease or petroleum jelly. Uh, petroleum jelly was more readily available for me. Uh, Traxxas recommends grease, but either way, it needs to be sealed before you put the cover on. While replacing the cap for the uh, electronics, make sure that there are no wires uh, interfering with the seal before tightening the screws. Note the pass-through in the rear shock tower for the wiring that goes to the rear of the vehicle. Uh, it's also the hole where the uh, power cables for the motor come through and the temperature sensor and uh, any wires that need to go through to the rear of the vehicle from the electronics. Also note the protector on the temperature sensor cable 
as it's there needed to protect the cable where it passes through the shock tower. This is the temperature sensor mount and uh, take note that uh, the wire uh, has a small bump underneath the shrink wrap which is where the sensor is and that sensor has a specific point where it mounts inside the mount. To get this line correctly is important. I found uh, that in mounting the heat sensor uh, it was best to remove the rear bumper and uh, you start here removing this screw and then on the other side the left rear removing this screw. Once the bumper has been removed then you'll have access to the motor where you need to mount the mount for the temperature sensor. I think you'll find that the temperature sensor needs uh, three hands to be mounted one to hold the sensor and two to tie the cable tie around and uh, through the sensor. Once this has been completed, you can reinstall the bumper and, uh, and remove the end of the wire tie. Now we can attach the power tap connector to the end of the vehicle speed control, allowing us to monitor battery voltage while the vehicle is in operation. To keep the supply lead for the power tap from getting tangled, uh, I attached it here with an included wire tie. After doing a cleanup of all the connections and tightening all the wires, cable tying all the loose ends, and uh, putting the body back on, uh, we should be ready to go. The uh, controller has different options for the screen as to what your gauges look like. We selected these. Note that the uh, voltage drops as you accelerate the RPMs increase and the mileage in mile per hour increases. The temperature gauge, uh, I note, did not change, but uh, we didn't run it very long. I did note that when I installed the temp temperature gauge to begin with, uh, on its first use, that uh, it was around 80 that day uh, in the room where I was working, and the gauge did indicate 80 at that time, so I know it does work. And to keep track of your battery and the temperature, probably are the most interesting uh, or useful parts. Hope this was a help to you guys.